In the previous video, we have talked about the triune brain consisting of three main layers and what distinguishes them. Now that we understand more about the layers, let's talk about the individual functions and how they work together. What do these three layers look like and what are their functions? Now, we said that the first layer of brain was the reptile brain. And if we look at the main structures of the reptile brain, it's basically the brain stem and the cerebellum. And this part of the brain is fully developed at birth. And it's responsible for our survival as it regulates our heartbeat, our breathing, our intestines. And it helps us to react to an emergency situation. When we need to run away from danger, we need to fight the danger or simply freeze or faint because of the danger. This part of our brain is activated and protects us. Apart from fighting or running away from danger, the brain can be overwhelmed and a person may faint or they might freeze in a dangerous situation. This part of the brain has positive thoughts and it can only think in present tense. It doesn't dwell on the past or the future at all. This part of the brain also only thinks in a selfish way as it only thinks about me survival and not other people. The mammalian brain or emotional brain or feeling brain is fully developed at birth but it is not fully functional as it needs the environment to develop. Uh, when we talk about a part of the brain that is developing we really mean that different neurons are starting to talk to each other to develop new pathways and the environment can influence how they talk to each other. This part of the brain is in the middle of the three layers and it's therefore it acts like a way station between the reptile brain, survival brain and the new cortex or the smart brain. It relays information from the top to the bottom or from the bottom to the top. This layer of the brain is mainly focused on emotion and what's interesting is the motion part of the word emotion means that there's movement. It almost acts like an emotional spark that makes us feel alive. The downside is that we also experience emotions on the other side of the spectrum such as being moody, irritable, anxious and depressed. There are mainly negative thoughts in this area of the brain and there's actually a reason behind it. This part of the brain thinks in the past and the present and it's not just in the past as the reptile brain. It's important for this part of the brain to remember the past because negative experiences that we've had that could have hurt us uh, that could happen again if we do not recognize the signs must be an issue. It also recognizes that you're not alone and that there are other people in your world. The brain's number one job is to protect us from harm. And by remembering a negative experience that can harm us is far more important to the brain than remembering a positive experience that cannot hurt us. This is especially important in terms of trauma and how the brain can hold on to and remember the trauma as a way to protect an individual from experiencing it again. This part of the brain undergoes major changes during adolescence and it makes teenagers extremely sensitive to the world around them. The new cortex or the smart brain uh, is also just partially developed and almost non-functioning at the start. It also needs the environment to develop, just like the mammalian brain. We call this part of the brain, specifically the front part of the brain, the boss or the CEO of the brain, because this part of the brain helps us to think logically about things and make smart decisions. It helps us to do more than just survive. It actually helps us to thrive and have a quality life. It's responsible for things such as impulse control, planning, morality, inhibition, 
social interaction, willpower, motivation, decision making, analytical thinking, logic and creativity. The smart brain thinks in the past, present and the future and both positive and negative thoughts. And it also recognizes that we can care for others and we can learn to show empathy towards others. How does it work and what is the process? How does information travel between the world outside and the brain? We receive all information from the world through our senses. And it means that if we didn't have any senses, we would not have been able to connect to the outside world at all. Our behavior is driven by our emotions. And it's almost like a script of a play. Our emotions form the script and our behavior is the play. Here's the magic in it all. Our brain gives meaning to the information that enters our bodies through our senses. And as we said in the previous video, it's really important that depending on the part of the brain we use to interpret that information that comes in through the senses, that is going to determine our behavior. If we use the reptile brain to interpret the information, we're going to act in a survival way. And if we use the mammalian brain to interpret the information, we're going to act in an emotional brain. And lastly, if we use the prefrontal cortex or the new cortex, the smart brain, to interpret the information, we're going to react in a logical and well thought through manner. In summary, it is clear that the different parts of the brain work in an integrated and seamless manner. And it depends on cues from the environment. In the next video, we'll talk about how we move up and down between these three layers and why it is sometimes really necessary to do in order for us to survive. We call this process up and down shifting. See you then.